menstruation, istihaba, irregular bleeding, and postnatal bleeding. Islam addresses the woman with special care, especially the scholars. They allotted many pages in their books, which we may refer to as fiqh, Islamic legislation, for the female. The most apparent chapter in this fiqh is the fiqh of menstruation. Scholars of linguistics define menstruation as the flowing and course of something. In the context of Islamic law, it is defined as blood that flows from the uterus of a female at a particular time, meaning in the month, and without any cause, when she is actually healthy. The blood is black in color, is accompanied by abdominal pains, and has an objectionable odor. The female also might feel particularly hot during her cycle. No forms of worship are obligatory on a young girl until she starts to menstruate, the age of which differs according to the environment, weather, and nature of each female. Even though there is no particular length for the menstrual cycle, most females menstruate for six or seven days. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Hamna bint Jahsh, who used to menstruate for many days, Observe your menses for six or seven days. Allah alone knows which it should be. After that, you must take a purificatory bath. There are many points for discussion in the chapter of menstruation, which the scholars explain in their books. The first point is that the fundamental principle in Islamic law is that a pregnant female doesn't menstruate. But when a pregnant woman sees blood, when the time for delivery is near, and this is accompanied with pains or contractions, then this blood is deemed as postnatal bleeding. On the other hand, if it is not accompanied with pain, or if it occurred a long time before delivery, then it is menstrual blood. Also, if the menstrual cycle comes earlier or later than it usually does for a particular female, or lasted longer or shorter than the normal length for her, one should not give the matter any consideration. Whenever one sees blood, it is to be considered as menstrual blood, and whenever one sees signs of purity, it is to be considered as such. Similarly, the scholars stressed that the purity of a female is known by a whitish discharge, which is a white liquid that is discharged when the menstrual cycle finishes. But if there is no whitish discharge, a sign of purity is dryness. This is known by placing white cotton wool in the usual flow of blood. If the cotton remains dry without being stained with anything, then this is a sign of purity. The legislative topics of menstruation include two important matters, al-qudra and al-sufra. Al-sufra is the pale yellow blood that flows from a female. Al-qudra is black or very dark blood. When a woman sees pale yellow blood or black blood during the period of menstruation or just before the time of purity, meaning from menstruation, the ruling regarding one who menstruates applies for her. This is in accordance with the hadith narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She states that the females used to use pieces of cloth similar to pads during their menstrual cycles. When they saw the cotton stained with pale yellow blood, she would say to them, do not be in haste, wait until you see the whitish discharge. She meant that it, meaning the whitish discharge, is the sign of purity from menstruation. But if a woman sees pale yellow blood or black blood after purification, that is from menstruation, it will not be regarded or given any consideration and neither wudu nor ghusl is imperative on her. This is according to the hadith narrated by Umm Abiyah when she said we used to not regard al-qudra and as sufra as being important after purification. The ruling of intermittent menstruation. If a woman sees menstrual blood on a day and purity on another, her situation is one of the following two situations. 
The blood flows continuously from her without stopping, which is a condition known as istihaba. Or the flow of blood is discontinuous or intermittent, as the flow of blood is present sometimes and she is pure at other times. At such a time, there is one of two rulings for the female. First, if the blood flow stops for less than a day, that day is counted as part of a menstrual period. Second, if she sees what indicates purity, that is a whitish discharge, at this time, this is considered the end of menstruation. She then is regarded as being pure, regardless of whether the blood has stopped recently or a long time ago, or it stopped for more or less than a day. Istihaba. Istihaba is often confused for menstruation and vice versa. The scholars of fiqh have defined istihaba as the continuous flow of blood from the vagina of a female. It doesn't stop at all or it stops only for a short while. It is possible to differentiate between the two types of blood as menstrual blood is thick and black whereas istihaba blood is light red. Also, the first has an objectionable foul odor, whereas the second has no odor. Menstrual blood does not clot. The opposite is the case for istihada blood. And menstrual blood flows from the upper part of the uterus, whereas the blood of istihada flows from a vein from the lower part of the uterus. Menstrual blood is natural and a sign of good health whereas is the how the blood flows as a result of an irregularity or sickness. The first one flows at a known time, but the second has no set time or period. Various situations of one experiencing istihaba. A woman experiencing istihaba fits into one of four possible situations. Firstly, she had a set period for her menses before the occurrence of istihaba she should first apportion this number of days for her menses and then count the remaining days as istihaba. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, may Allah be pleased with her, said, O Messenger of Allah, my menses do not stop. Do I leave salah? He replied, no. That is what flows from a blood vessel. You should not observe salah for the number of days you usually have menstruation. Then take a bath afterwards and observe salah. Secondly, she didn't have a set period for her menses. But she is capable of distinguishing between menstrual and istihaba blood. In this case, she should distinguish between the two types of blood. It is confirmed from Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, may Allah be pleased with her that she used to suffer from istihaba, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to her, If it is menstrual blood, which is known dark blood, then do not observe salah. But if it is the other, meaning istihaba, just perform wudu, then observe salah, because that is flow from a blood vessel. Thirdly, she did not have a set time for her cycle and she is not capable of distinguishing between the two menstrual blood and istihada blood. In this case, she apportions the most common number of days that most women menstruate for her menses. This is usually six to seven days in every month. She starts counting the days of her menstrual cycle from the time she first sees blood, and she takes the remaining days in the month to be istihada. This is because of the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Hamna bint Jahsh. May Allah be pleased with her. Observe your menses for six or seven days. Allah alone knows which it should be. Then wash. And when you see that you are purified and quite clean, pray for the next 23 or 24 days and nights and fast. For that will be enough for you. And do so every month, just as women menstruate and are purified at the time of their menstruation and their purification. The fourth and last situation is when she had a known period and she is also able to distinguish between the two, that is menstrual blood and istihada. That is menstrual blood and istihada blood. 
This female counts her menses according to her customary number of days and does not try to attempt to distinguish between the different types of blood. This is because the length of the days is more accurate for her. However, if she forgets what her customary number of days was, then she should attempt to distinguish between the different types of blood. What remains to be discussed are some points that scholars have elaborated on. The first one is that if a woman experiencing istihada knows when her period of menstruation starts, but she then forgot the number of days, she therefore calculates using the most usual number of days for menstruation of the women, six or seven days. If a woman knows the number of days for her period, but forgets the time for her cycle, that is, if it comes at the beginning or end of the month, then she calculates the number of days she uses for menstruation from the beginning of the month. But if she says that it usually occurs in the middle of the month, but she isn't sure of the day it actually occurs, then she starts to calculate the number of days of menstruation from the first day in the middle of the month, because the middle of the month is more accurate for her. And when the period for menstruation is over, a woman experiencing istihava must take a purificatory bath or ghusl and put a piece of cloth or the like around her vagina and thus she is considered pure. She prays and fasts without bothering about the blood which flows after she has performed wudu. This is because she is excused. As for purifying herself, she does it in one of the three following ways. First, she performs wudu for prayers at the beginning of the time of each salah. She does this after she has cleaned her private parts and placed a piece of cloth over her vagina. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Fatima bin Hubaysh, thereafter perform wudu for each salah, then observe the prayer. Second, she delays dhuhr until soon before asr. She then takes a bath after which she observes both dhuhr and asr, and similarly for maghrib and isha. This is due to the statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Hamna bint Jahsh. May Allah be pleased with her. If you're able, delay dhuhr and hasten asr. Take a bath and pray the two together, meaning Dhuhr and Asr. And if you can, delay Maghrib and hasten Isha. Take a bath and observe the two together, meaning Maghrib and Isha. And if you are able to bathe for Fajr, then do so, and then fast, if you have the strength for that. Third, she takes a bath for each prayer. This is according to what was recorded concerning Umm Habiba, who suffered from istihada for seven years. She asked the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, about this, and he ordered her to take a purificatory bath. Thereafter, she took a bath for every subsequent salah. If a woman bleeds for any reason, for example, surgery on the uterus, and blood flows out of her vagina, one of the two following conditions will be applicable. First, that she can't menstruate anymore or past menopause. In this condition, she will not be under the ruling concerning istihada and will not be prevented from salah at any time. The blood will be considered as blood occurring as a result of sickness. Thus, she will have to perform wudu for each salah. Second, that it is still possible for her to menstruate, meaning she has not attained menopause. In this case, the rulings of istihaba apply. There remains one important matter which the scholars have discussed. This is that it is permissible to have intercourse with the female experiencing istihaba, because the sharia does not prohibit this. Postnatal bleeding. Now, we will move from menstruation to postnatal bleeding. 
The scholars have defined postnatal bleeding as blood that comes from the uterus of a female as a result of childbirth. Its time period is usually 40 days, but it could be less than that. As soon as it stops, she takes a bath and starts to observe salah. There are many rulings concerning postnatal bleeding. First, if a woman gives birth and sees no blood, although this is indeed very uncommon, she performs wudu, then prays. She does not have to take a bath, meaning ghusl. Second, when postnatal bleeding continues for more than 40 days, and her usual condition is that it stops after the 40th day, and there are indications that the bleeding may stop, then she waits for the bleeding to stop. But if the bleeding continues, then she is suffering from istihava, and the rulings concerning istihava apply to her. Postnatal bleeding is not confirmed until what is born has the shape of a human. If a woman gives birth to an embryo or a fetus that is born before maturity and which does not have the shape of a human, there are three conditions. First, this is just bad blood if it occurs before the first 40 days of pregnancy. She is thus required to take a bath, pray and fast. Second, if this occurs after 80 days of pregnancy, then it is postnatal bleeding. Third, if this occurs between 40 and 80 days, then it, meaning the blood, is checked to see if it is a fetus. If it is, then the blood is postnatal. But if otherwise, it's just bad blood. After a detailed study of the rules for menstruation and postnatal bleeding, the scholar stated that certain acts are forbidden for one who is menstruating or experiencing postnatal bleeding. The first one being sexual intercourse. Due to the saying of Allah, the exalted, they ask you concerning menstruation. Say that it is and other, meaning a harmful thing for a husband to have intercourse with his wife while she is having her menses. Therefore keep away from women during menses and do not approach them until they are purified, meaning from menses. And when they have purified themselves, that is, they have taken a bath, then approach them as Allah has ordained for you, which means have intercourse with them in any manner as long as it is in their vagina. And the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to the companions when this verse was revealed, do everything with them meaning during menstruation, except sexual intercourse. A man who has sexual intercourse with his wife while she is menstruating is a sinner. He has to pay a penalty for the expiation of his sin. She also pays a penalty if she willingly agreed to this act. The penalty is giving charity worth a gold dinar or half a gold dinar. This is according to the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him in which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said concerning the one that had intercourse with his wife during menstruation, he should pay the value of a dinar or half a dinar. A dinar equals 4.25 grams of gold. When a woman's menstrual flow stops, a man must not have sexual intercourse with his wife until she has taken a purificatory bath. Allah the Almighty and Sublime says, and don't approach them until they are purified that is purified from menstrual blood. Then he says, and when they have purified themselves, meaning have taken a bath, then he says, then approach them as Allah has ordained for you, that is sexual intercourse. Similarly, one who is menstruating is forbidden to do salah or the prayer. As the Prophet peace be upon him said, when menstruation comes, leave salah. But when it leaves, take a bath, that is in order to be purified from the blood and commence with salah. Due to Allah's mercy for women, He did not order them to make up the salah missed due to menstruation after they had finished menstruating. It is reported from Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she was asked about why women make up for missed fasts as a result of menstruation and do not do so for missed prayers. She replied, we used to be afflicted with that, meaning having menstruation during Ramadan, etc. And we were ordered to make up for our missed fasts by fasting at other times. But 
we are not ordered to make up for missed prayers. Offering prayers at or within their prescribed times is obligatory on a female who is close to the beginning of her menstrual cycle until she actually starts to menstruate. Similarly, this applies to a woman whose cycle has ended slightly before the time the prayer finishes. This applies to her even if the amount of time left to pray the due prayer is the time it takes to pray one raka'ah of a prayer. However, if the time left to offer the prayer is less than the time it takes to pray one raka'ah, then she is excused from the prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who catches a complete raka'ah or unit of prayer of salah with the imam has indeed caught the whole salah. It is also forbidden for one who is menstruating or experiencing postnatal bleeding to fast. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Is it not that when she menstruates, she will not fast or pray? We replied, Oh yes. If the menstrual blood of a woman stops before Fajr and she fasts, her fast is valid, even if she does not take a bath until after Fajr. Similarly, it is forbidden for one who is menstruating or experiencing postnatal bleeding to touch the Qur'an, meaning with her bare hands. Allah says, none should touch it, meaning the Qur'an, but the purified ones. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the Qur'an should not be touched except by the pure. It is also forbidden when menstruating or experiencing postnatal bleeding to succumbulate the Kaaba. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, when she menstruated, do what a pilgrim does except circumambulation until you are pure from your menstrual cycle. Also, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the people were ordered by the Prophet, peace be upon him, to perform circumambulation of the Kaaba as the last deed during Hajj except the menstruating women who were excused from it. Staying in the mosque except for a wayfarer or a traveler is forbidden for a menstruating female or one experiencing postnatal bleeding. Allah says, O you who believe, approach not salah, which is the prayer, when you are in a drunken state until you know meaning, the meaning of what you utter, nor when you are in a state of janabah, meaning sexual impurity, except when you are on a journey or just passing by until you wash your whole body, which means take a bath. And the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, it is not permitted for a menstruating female or one who is junub, meaning sexually impure, to stay in the mosque. Similarly, it is forbidden for a man to divorce his wife when she is menstruating. Allah the Exalted says, O Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when you divorce women, divorce them at their idda, meaning prescribed times meaning when they are in a state of purity and not menstruating, so their idda can be calculated accurately. But the divorce is to be counted, even though it is forbidden and an innovation. The scholars have pointed out that it is forbidden for a menstruating female to stay in the same place where the people are praying the Eid prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the menstruating women should stay away from the place of prayer, meaning for the Eid prayer. But it is recommended for them to go to the Eid congregation for prayer, listen to the sermon and see the goodness and the supplication of the Muslims.